this Mercury 150 rebuild. Please remember to like, subscribe, send me any comments that you have. My out, used outboard motor buying guide is available to you, $20 value, to you for free if you subscribe to my channel. You can also shoot me an email at keith at outboarddad.com and see if I can help you out with any motors you're working on. I uh, love the comments that are coming in and several people that I'm able to keep in touch with uh, across the country so and around the world. So we're going to continue on on this. So please like, subscribe, and we'll get back into this. see what that looks like now. Okay, so I have no more scratches where my rings ride. And down at the bottom, I have not removed enough because remember I told you how this will taper a little bit. So that'll be the next we work on. So let's clean this a little bit and get our dial bore gauge in here. And let's see where we ended up, how much material we took off. Um, I'm gonna guess it's somewhere between three and four thousandths we took off. I still feel a little jumpiness, very little um, when I'm grinding. Notice you see the grinding grit coming off of it too. I'm, I'm gonna be wearing a mask when I really get into this. But let's see where we're at. Okay. We are exactly five thousandths there. And we are five and a half thousandths there. So we're getting closer. We were two thousandths out of round. Now we're half a thousandths out of round. So at this point, I'm going to stop with my crappy stones on this one and start with the other two, get them cleaned up. I'm going to assume it's probably going to be pretty close to the same. And then I'll do the other three, and then I know I can order my pistons at 15 over. So let's do the rest of them. Let's see where this one's at. So no, I'm not wearing a mask. Wear a mask. I do have the doors open, so... Uh, I also... Um, need to get a mask because I have one somewhere around here. So now let's measure this one, see where we're at. Well, we didn't take out all the scratches yet. So let's keep going on this one. This is one of the middle ones, so it may need a little more. Let me get a mask because I'm going to have to go at this one. getting really close it doesn't seem to be out of round anymore um, but there is still a little scratch in that cylinder so we're gonna measure it again see where we're at but if you notice in the last little round that I did there I flipped the stones and ran it in reverse now it looked a little awkward but I'm trying to get the bottom of the cylinder remember the more we hone in the blind hole cylinder the more the stones get worn like this and the bottom really doesn't get hit so I flip the stones over, run it in reverse. Now I don't want to do fine machining with that. I'm just taking material off now to get it as close as I can. And then I can use my better stones and my modified stones to get in there. So let's see where we're at right now, how much we've taken off. So we've taken off seven thousandths and it is pretty straight. We're really close maybe a quarter of a thousandths out of round. So let's get that scratch out of there the rest of the way. I'm sure it's gonna be within the 15 thousandths range so that we can go 15 over on these next set of pistons, but wanna be sure, so we'll keep grinding away. Keep in mind, this does take a lot of time as you can see. So make sure, you know, this is something you wanna do, number one. Number two, Nine times out of 10, it's just one or two cylinders that you have to do. This one just happens to be six um, because of the warping and out of round. 
sometimes you go to the machine shop and they'll tell you, listen, you can't just do one. This, this block was really bad and they, you don't know if they're telling you the truth or not. Well, the only way to know for sure is to take it apart and measure it yourself. So we're going to continue on boring this out. I'm going to get some straighter stones in there now on these two cylinders. I'm going to get this one with those other stones uh, just cleaned up. It doesn't have as much scratches on it. Take some material off and then we'll continue on with boring. Remember, sometimes boring can be boring. So don't lose track of where you're at. If you've gone a little bit, you tighten it. Each time you tighten it, you take another maybe quarter thousandths off. So you'll get used to how much you're wearing through this cast iron because it's a cast iron sleeve inside of this aluminum block. So don't go too far. Keep measuring as you go. You don't want to overshoot. It's not the end of the world if you do because you can just bore out to that next size. Now, if you've got a block that's already been bored out and you may have to go to a white scope piston because most manufacturers only go up to maybe 30, sometimes 40, whereas white scope can go up to 60 on some of them. So you may have to do that. So just keep that in mind. Yes, you can make mistakes. That's how I've learned. Go a little too far, measure it. Oh man, went too far. I'm gonna have to order another piston. Guess what? That piston goes on the shelf for the next rebuild that I'm gonna do later on. So uh, keep that in mind. I've got enough material off of all three that I just have some minimal scratches in them and I've taken a lot of the out of round. So it's, it's much more round. Now I have a set here. You see, I, I labeled it on the back straight. Um, so it's a straight set that I haven't used to, to really bore a lot out. So I'm going to put those stones. You'll see they're a little bit different. I have a guide and a stone. So we're going to put this in here. It can only go in one way. So uh, you can follow the instructions that come with the, the uh, AN111, AN110 hones. But obviously it wants to be going this way when it's grinding the cylinder. So if you keep that in mind, we're going clockwise, right? So we want to make sure that these enter here the proper way. so that the teeth can grab it. Have to kind of hold them all in there with your hand so they don't fall out. Now we can crank them out. So if you look at this closely, you can see I have a wiper on one side, which is more of a guide and then I have my stones on the other side and this goes in here and runs clockwise. So we'll start in here first, put my mask on and we'll see if we can get this cleaned up a little more. Yeah, it's a little bit of work, but not too bad. So I put the straighter stones in. You could, you could probably hear when I was doing it, it's a lot more straight and round. You don't have that whoa, 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 happening. That's the technical term. Um, so now let's clean it a little bit. We will just clean them up a little bit just to get some of the grit out of there, mainly so it doesn't get into my um, dial bore gauge. And we will see where we're at. And then I'll give you a close up here. We'll see that there's no more scratches in these cylinders. The other thing to keep in mind, if you notice that round with the straighter stones that I have in there, I didn't come all the way out as far, did I? I stayed down to the bottom a little more and I didn't come, a couple times I came up, but not too far. So what's gonna happen when you do that, and I've prepared for this, is you're gonna end up with a barrel now on your cylinder because I'm not wearing the top and bottom as much as I am the middle, right? So my stones are gonna naturally wear that way. That's okay. We're gonna be able to clean that up in the next set of stones that we're gonna use. And also when we switch to our 200 and 300 is when we're really gonna straighten these out. So let's see where we're at, because we're coming along good on this side of the engine now. 
So I'm only at about six and a half thousandths there. Let's see our straightness. Ooh, a six and a quarter. Let's go to 45, six and a half. Six and a half. So this is almost dead round now. Let's see this one. This one we had to go a little further. This one I'm at nine thousandths. Remember our center cylinders had the most damage on them. So I'm at nine thousandths on this. Should still be within range for my 15 over, right? Because we're not 15. And I can still feel comfortable with those, ordering those pistons. So right at nine thousandths there. Maybe a little over nine thousandths there. So we're really close to around nine thousandths on the nose. So let's see what this one is. This one we're at six thousandths. Six thousandths. Remember this one was the most at around uh, five and three quarter thousandths. Really not a three quarter thousandths, just the way I'm stating it. Yeah, this is just just about round. All these are just about round now. So now we know we can continue on. Now let me show you a little closer here. Now when we look inside of our cylinder walls, this is where most of our scoring was on our exhaust side, right? And you can see through all three of these cylinders, there is no more scores in there. They are nice and clean. Now if we look down at the bottom deeper, we see we took some material away. But let's check that. Good point. Let's see where we're at. Put our dial bore gauge down in the bottom. It's a little tricky to get it down there sometimes. But let's see where we're at. So we're at 5,000. So we're, we are, yep, we're at 5,000 at the bottom of that one. So we're 1,000 larger at the bottom or smaller at the bottom than we are at the top this one was nine and look at that it's about seven thousand seven and a half thousandths so we're one and a half smaller at the bottom and this one is this one is looks like four four and a half thousandths this is now s smaller at the bottom than it is at the top right because we know we are blind hole cylinder and we're gonna get a V in that, right? We're gonna straighten that out, but we didn't, we're not five thousandths, right? It's only a thousandths, maybe one and a half thousandths. And that's why I have the modified stones. So now we're gonna get the pistons. First thing I'm gonna bore the other side, I'm gonna go through the same process, so I won't bore you with the video of all that. And just make sure we're not gonna be more than 15 over on that side. So we're gonna continue on with this project and share more of how this works right up to the point where we'll fire it up on a stand when we're done. So always nice to turn that key after all this work. Again, once you get used to doing this, it doesn't take that long. You can really bore out and get really close. You get, get used to how tight to make it, how your drill works, how your hand goes back and forth. And you can really bore out a couple cylinders without, you know, in a couple hours without too much trouble. Listen, if you don't feel comfortable doing it, you can, or you don't wanna buy the, invest in the tools, you can certainly take it to a machine shop but I would definitely invest in a dial bore gauge and your micrometer. This way you can measure the pistons. Well, he's gonna put it together if you're gonna have him do the whole thing, unless you're gonna put it together. If you put it together yourself, then you can measure everything to make sure what they did was accurate. So you have to be careful. I've had a lot of guys send me comments saying, yeah, I took it to a machine shop and then I measured it myself supposed to be 8,000 piston wall clearance, I had 12. And the guy said, well, it's gonna run fine. Yeah, but just because it runs fine doesn't mean it's gonna have longevity and it's gonna have the power that it should. So that's what we wanna shoot for. So stay tuned, please like, subscribe. Don't forget my used outboard motor buying guide until October 13th is free for my subscribers. So like, subscribe, send me any comments you have, and we'll continue on rebuilding outboards and getting you out on the water. Have a great day.